I work with a lot of clients who come to me at this breaking point mm -hmm. of like, I know I'm here for something more. I know I'm not here just to be part of the system or just to hate my job so much that I drink a bottle of wine every night after work. I mean, this is quite literally like the common oh, story yeah. or I'm just tuning out and or whatever it is. Um, and, you know, I'm wondering like this this path that a lot of people are on, you know, how is because here's the problem, right? It's like you and I are saying, um, yes, there's this part of us that knows what am I here for? Like, what is my part? Why am I incarnated here at this time? But then there's the other voices, which I hear, and I, I get people saying this. Well, like, not everybody has that privilege to take a look at their purpose because they're just trying to survive. What do you yeah. say to that? I mean, that's this is where actually we get, that's yeah. actually very condescending and patronizing mm, to say I get you it. know only the affluent, only the privileged have the luxury of looking at the purpose of life and so on. Mm -hmm. Is that actually true? No. Because when I have interacted with people who are in the global underclass, they are no less aware of these questions. Mm -hmm. they, 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 it's not like they don't think about those things too. Exactly. And sometimes, even in the midst of the struggle to survive, they will do things, not just thinking about these bigger issues, but they, were, they will act on these bigger issues. They, they, will, they will become activists. They will become change agents. They will create things that have nothing to do with their surviving better. In fact, that will put them even at greater risk. I'm thinking about environmental activists in Brazil, in Ecuador, in, in Peru, in, in Chile, in places where, in Guatemala, where you can get killed, tortured and killed for being an environmental activist. And these are not wealthy people who have like extra time on their hands. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I'm feeling, you know, a bit like angry at this, you know, yeah. at this at this critique. You know, it is it actually inverts. It, it actually comes from a, a privileged smugness. Mm -hmm. And it says that basically if we want the whole whole world to be enlightened, they have to follow the course of development that we imagine ourselves to be at the pinnacle of. So yeah, like most people listening to this are probably not concerned about what, about their food tomorrow. But does that mean that you are in that you are actually better off than people who are wondering about where their food is going to come from tomorrow? Not necessarily. They might be happier than you. They might be suffering less than you. They might know something that you don't know. So like this, so anyway, um, it, it brings to mind a, a story um, that Cynthia Jures told me um, uh, about a pilgrimage she led to India, you know, and they're, they're going from place to place. And one of the people on the pilgrimage is um, a medical doctor, very, very, you know, very wealthy, well off and just miserable and, and just like crying and crying, you know, and one day they're crying there and a woman comes up uh, carrying a baby, a woman who is wearing rags. Like one of those people who doesn't know where her food is coming from tomorrow, like indigent. And she's even carrying a baby. And she says, don't cry and like strokes her face. Don't cry. And she's just radiating, radiating joy. Like, don't tell me that this is somebody who doesn't have the luxury to become enlightened and to ponder the deeper mysteries of life. And really, like, to take it even to a further extreme, um, it's the um, Viktor Frankl's famous quote, uh, something along the lines of this. Those of us who were in the camps remember that there were some who went from hut to hut, comforting others and giving away their last piece of bread. Though few in number, they offer proof that of this truth, that everything can be taken away from somebody but one.
their choice of how to respond to circumstances. So, mm -hmm. and that none of this means that therefore we shouldn't do anything about poverty and injustice and so forth. This is not a way to escape our responsibility and in fact our our desire to do something about it. It's not like you have to fight yourself to do something about it. It's not a battle between luxury and enjoyment versus being a good person. <clears throat> the luxury and enjoyment become empty and shriveled and hellish if you are not also contributing to life and beauty in the world. So this is not like, <clears throat> you know, some justification for something. For, for, for selfishness. No justification is needed because it's not something that, that you actually want. You can try. You probably, some of your clients have tried. They got wealthy and they retired early to play tennis and golf. And that lasted like two weeks because that's not why we're here. This is part of a new story. Why you are here is not to maximize your, your security and self-interest and money and and no that's not why you're here that is a lie actually why you are here is to contribute to life and beauty on the earth to do things that are meaningful to to create something and say that is good that's why we're here so yeah um Yeah, psychedelics are not, you know, or should not be and cannot be well understood as a mere indulgence of those who have time for them.